And we are live. It's Dr. J here in the house. Today's video is going to be on red light therapy, the benefits, the mechanism, how everything works. We just did a podcast here earlier today on seasonal depression and how to get to the root cause of that. Red light therapy is an important tool within seasonal depression that can be very helpful. We're going to break down some of the mechanisms as well as the benefits. So really excited to be connected here. All right, today's video is live, so we're gonna be able to answer some questions afterwards, which is really exciting. All right, so let's dive in here. So red light therapy, there's two frequencies we're looking at here. We're looking at like the infrared red light therapy, which is typically in the 600 nanometer frequency wavelength, all right? Different light has different frequencies, and depending on that frequency, it'll show up as a certain color. So red light, for instance, is gonna be in that mid 600 nanometer frequency wavelength. The next is going to be infrared, or infrared um, is going to be more in that mid-800 range, 800 nanometer range. And when you combine the two, you get a sweet spot. So in general, what's happening? So you have this enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase. Cytochrome C oxidase is a very powerful enzyme, and when activated, it can do a lot of things. Under stress, we may have extra nitric oxide which can bind to that CCO enzyme. So here you have CCO, under stress you have nitric oxide here, it can bind to that. And when that's bound up, it's not able to do its job, okay? So essentially what happens is we have oxygen should be able to bind to NADH, and that should be able to enter into the Krebs cycle, uh, or should enter, enter from the Krebs cycle into the electron transport chain. So when we have the CCO compound, which is bind to nitric oxide, we're not going to have these reducing agents downstream like NADH be able to give off their electrons. All right? And when we talk about reducing, all reducing means is that that NAD has an extra electron of hydrogen. Right, so we have NAD, it becomes reduced once we bind an additional hydrogen to it. And when we have the CCO compound and we have nitric oxide bound to it, that's not, it's not able to let those hydrogens, right, those reducing compounds, those electrons go downstream. So where does red light therapy come in? So red light is essentially going to be breaking up the CCO and the nitric oxide, it breaks it up. And when that CCO and that nitric oxide are broken up, that allows the CCO now to help that hydrogen and that oxygen to now bind downstream. So what happens is oxygen, right, is gonna be bound to NADH. And NADH is that reducing agent that comes from the Krebs cycle. And that Krebs cycle then spits out into the electron transport chain and all those hydrogens go into the electron transport chain and what happens is we have a byproduct of water as well as ATP and ATP is the cellular currency for energy. We put a couple of pictures on screen. So here's our kind of the big overview. This is really helpful. So you can see here aerobic metabolism requires oxygen. All right, really important. So we talked about right CCO and nitric oxide. When that gets broken up, what happens? Oxygen now comes out and that oxygen is really, really important for the Krebs cycle, right? And then from the Krebs cycle, what typically gets kicked out is gonna be two elements, two compounds of ATP, but bigger picture wise, let me just, what gets kicked out are gonna be these reducing agents, NADH and FADH2. These get spit out from the Krebs cycle. So let me go back again. Here's cellular respiration. So we have, this is primarily oxygen. You can see we get 38 units of ATP for two units of anaerobic. That's why using oxygen for fuel is ideal. This is what's gonna happen more like in burst training, resistance training. That's why you can't do it that long because it's the pathways are not that efficient. So you can see glycolysis, we only generate two ATP here. This is from glucose. But then we go down to the Krebs cycle and this thing gets churned around twice and we get two units of ATP, but the bigger thing that comes out of here are these FADH2 and the NADH. These are reducing compounds, right? And those reducing compounds right here, NADH and FADH, they now go into the electron transport chain and then ATP is kicked out along with water. So big picture, you consume glucose. Glucose glycolysis means it gets broken down Right now it goes into the mitochondria. This is the mitochondria. So the Krebs cycle, 
or the citric acid cycle, same thing, that churns around twice. And we have hydrogens get kicked out to NADH and FADH2. And these hydrogens break off NADH and FADH and they enter the electron transport chain. And that is where we generate a lot of these mitochondria down here, 34, so 36 or 38 in total, right? Two up here, two up there, and 34 down there. Now, if we go back to red light therapy and look down here, the big mechanism is we have this CCO, where is it, Cyt um, yeah, cytochrome C oxidase, and that's bound up, you can't really see it here, but it's bound up to nitric oxide. It's bound up to nitric oxide. So as soon as we can unbind that um, nitric oxide and cytochrome C oxidase, and the red light therapy helps break that off. As soon as we can unbind that, then the next step is it allows the oxygen to work better. And that oxygen is so important because you can see right here, this aerobic metabolism involves oxygen that allows the oxygen to now go downstream to the Krebs cycle and work. So without that nitric oxide, when that nitric oxide binds up that CCO, cytochrome C oxidase, it prevents the oxygen from going downstream, and the oxygen's really important for creating these extra hydrogens that now enter the electron transport chain, which you can see here. These extra hydrogens are really important. So that's the big picture of kind of what red light's doing. Essentially, it's charging up your mitochondria. It's charging up your mitochondria. That's the big thing. And the mitochondria is the powerhouse of your cell. And then you can see here, big picture wise, that's where the Krebs cycle occurs. That's where the electron transport chain occurs. Uh, glycolysis happens outside, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain happen inside. And red light kind of helps charge that battery. Of course, there are other important nutrients that run the electron or run the Krebs cycle, B vitamins, magnesium, about 12 different or eight to 10, eight to 12 different amino acids are involved there. So a lot of other important nutrients are involved. So you can't just say, hey, I'm gonna get red light therapy and that's it. Um, red light therapy is important for help mobilizing that oxygen, which is really important with aerobic metabolism, but we also need nutrients as well. So if we can combine the two, it really makes a big difference, especially when you come into times of the year where there's less light coming out or less light at a essentially at a lower intensity so you don't quite get that therapeutic dose this is where red light can be very helpful at stimulating your mitochondria stimulating atp and energy production so very very helpful all right so any questions here feel free and chime in i'm going to go grab the chat here and we can review some of these questions all right so today's you know video is a little bit heady i hope it was helpful just to kind of help you guys wrap your heads around it with some of the um, images. So are the red light beds at tanning places any good? It really just depends upon the frequency in which they're operating. So we mentioned red light in the mid 600 nanometer frequency is going to be good. And then the infrared's gonna be in the mid 800. So you really have to know what the frequency is coming off. Again, some people will say, well, the incandescent bulbs are better because there's less, they're not LED. And so some say that you're getting less, just, you know, less, um, they're just better, they're more effective. Some say, others will say the LED is more effective. And if you go look at my podcast, I talk about the LED versus the incandescent. So Evan, my co-host, likes the incandescent better. He feels better with it. But then there's some data showing that the LED does have a better therapeutic effect. I post some images in the description of that podcast that you can feel free and take a look at. All right, excellent. Hope that is helpful for you guys. I'm going to only answer questions on the topic of red light therapy. So if you have any questions on it, keep it to that topic and I'll be happy to answer those uh, for you. So you kind of have LED and you have the incandescent versions that are still hitting those same frequencies. You can also use a good quality sauna. I use a sunlight and sauna personally. We'll put a, a link down below. So if you wanna access that sauna, you can. That way you get, in that sauna, you get a combination of near and far between the six and 800 nanometer frequency. That way you get a combination of everything, which is very helpful. There are cheaper methods where you can just get that mid 600 nanometer bulb and that's at least cheaper. And then there's some where you can get like a juve light or a mito light, which are gonna have that 600 to 800 frequency, which can be very helpful. Oh, now benefits on red light therapy. Yeah, it can help 
reduce inflammation. It stimulates the mitochondria. It recharges your cellular battery, literally. Some people feel so energized coming, you know, getting some sun, they feel really energized. It can also stimulate serotonin uh, production. It can also help your circadian rhythm because basically when you have light coming in, it hits your pineal gland, it stimulates, and that has a powerful effect on making more serotonin and melatonin. That's why we know in seasonal affective disorder, right, when you have depression in the fall and winter months, we know this type of red light therapy can be very helpful for mood. And part of it is it's stimulating serotonin. And that serotonin is a building block of melatonin, which is very, very powerful. So reducing inflammation, improving oxygen capacity, helping joint pain, helping skin elasticity, as long as you aren't burning yourself, which I don't think you'll be able to do it. You need like an ultraviolet frequency to, to burn that. And, and that's on the other side of the spectrum, right? It's red is here and then orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and then violet and then ultraviolet. So that's on the other end of the spectrum. So I don't think you'll have any burning with that. So skin, mitochondria, sleep, mood, joint pain, reducing inflammation, cognitive benefits. So lots of real good things there. Excellent. All right, any other questions, feel free and chime in. Love to help you all out here. Um, yes, yeah, sleep as well. Uh, weight loss is going to be helpful. It makes sense because when you have better mitochondrial function, you're going to be able to burn more fat for fuel optimally, better recovery, better physical performance. All those things are very helpful. All right, guys, any last questions, feel free and chime in. If you like it, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Put your comments below. If anyone's tried red light therapy, I want to hear what your experience has been. Love to, to know about that. Hit that like button as well. Give it a smash for me and make sure you subscribe so you get access to more great videos like this coming your way. Awesome. All right. Wonderful. I think we're on the right track here. I'll be in touch tomorrow. Take care, y'all. Bye.